Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Views for Build. So in the last episode, we were playing around with the interior electronics a lot and we got this thing to come back to life as far as the body side of everything goes. In this episode, we're gonna be installing our Haltech Elite 2500 ECU into the car, running our wires, connecting it up to the engine, and hopefully at the end of this thing, we'll be able to hit a button and hear that starter turn over. Stay tuned. It's unboxing time. We're gonna go ahead and dive into this thing and see what we all have and then uh, kind of identify the different pieces and lay them out on the floor, a little quick mock-up, come up with a game plan. All right, we have taken a look around and made ourselves you know, familiar with this. Now, we are totally sponsored by Haltech. They provided us with all this awesome stuff. And this is like top of the line ECU wiring harness, all this good stuff. And we really should have talked with them before, <laughs> before we jump in to do the install. But I do think that us just jumping into this, this is the first one that I've ever done. Oscar's done this before, but us just jumping into this, this is just gonna kinda go to show how, you know, guys with just a general knowledge of vehicles can do this as well. And, and that's my hope. So I'm actually purposely not, well, not purposely, I just, you know, I forgot to talk to them and it's the weekend, but whatever. So we're gonna do this without talking to Haltech and we're gonna make this work to prove that it's easy and it's a DIY application and you can do this at home because they got great documentation and we look through all this stuff and it looks super solid. So we're gonna get started uh, by figuring out a switched signal to turn the ECU on. When do we wanna turn the ECU on? We know what wires to, uh, what wire activates it. Um, so what we need to do then is we need to pick a point which, uh, like an interaction with the driver and the vehicle of when we wanna turn the ECU on. So we've decided that, that we want that to be um, button press one. So when you press the on button in the Huracan, the body control module is gonna turn on and our Haltech ECU is gonna turn on as well. That's when we want that to happen. You won't be able to start the car at this point because keep in mind, anybody can walk into the car and hit that button once because we don't have the keys for this car either. So that's this is like, yeah, you can turn on the ECU, but you won't be able to start the car. So we're gonna do that with one button press. So what that means is we need to um, power on our Huracan once again. We need to hit that button press one and we need to find a wire that is dead when the button press one is off or one button press I mean and we need to find a wire that is, or that same wire that is alive it lights up when it's not. We can tap into that wire then and we can run that as our signal wire to talk to our ECU. All right, guys, it took us forever, but we finally found our signal wire. Real quick, when I was first starting out on cars, I almost had no idea how to operate one of these dealies. If you're trying to find like a hot wire in your car, it's pretty simple. Black goes to ground, meaning that goes to either your frame or a wire that you know is grounded. Throw the black to the ground. First, go down to Harbor Freight, spend $1, or these are free with a purchase. Do here, here, set that to 20. There you go, you can read voltage now, and then Black goes to a ground, and you stick this guy, or in our case, we were looking for really small pins, so you stick that in your thing, and it will read 12, between like 12, 13, 14, if it's a hot wire. So you'll be able to find wires inside your car that are hot all the time with your car completely off, and you'll be able to find some where when you hit the power button, turn your car into accessory, something like that, that will come to 12 volts. From zero, they'll become 12 volts. That's kind of the idea, you're looking for that. So say you wanted to wire in like, an internal light or something funky in your car, like an extra LED light under your footwell or something like that, that's what you would be looking for. Anyways, moving on. So now we are gonna go ahead and lay the harness through the car and we are gonna wire up the harness, the power wires and the ground wires for the main ECU. We're gonna run out through the firewall and out to our battery and then we're gonna um, put the rest of the stuff kind of where it goes in the car. All right, so we had to do some game planning about how, kind of how we're gonna run the wiring harness, where we're gonna keep the ECU and stuff like that. So 
um, all of these interior cables that you're seeing over there, those are like things that are either gonna run up here or live back here. The ECU we're gonna mount, um, there's just a little bit of room, we can mount it back here or we can mount it there or we can mount it under the seat, but it does have a USB connection so I can dial into it with my laptop and change tunes and stuff like that. So I wanna be able to easy access. I'm thinking we're gonna mount it right back here and then I'll put a nice little window in the back paneling right here that we can run a USB cable through and hit it. Or what we can do is pull a USB cable through there under the paneling, run it along my seat so I can actually have it in my lap when we wanna change tunes and stuff like that. So that, that stuff all goes there and then the Lamborghini paneling will just go right in there and hide everything. Um, and then the loom comes through here and uh, this is all just you know kind of laid out. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go uh, some stuff under the intake manifold out. Uh, we're gonna lower these things down to um, below the headers so it looks clean. And uh, so the main thing is, is the power, the power to the whole, the whole unit. The, so the signal power is tied into the signal thing that we just found earlier. So that tells the ECU, hey, you need to turn on. But the ECU is also always connected to power. And that's what these wires are right here. We're running a temp. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some really, really heavy duty gauge uh, wire. And we're gonna run a lug that's gonna live back here that runs to the battery positive and we can connect other things to it if we need to. So right now we're just emulating that with some like 14 gauge wire running under the car. So you have the three powers in the ground to the ECU and it's running that way. So now when we go ahead and are they connected yet? Nope. Nope. When we connect that wire and we turn the car on, we're going to hear our elite turn on for the first time. All right, so we got power on, and you can see on our ECU that it says it has power now, and uh, all of our like relays like clicked on and everything else. So uh, I want to go ahead and install the Haltech software on my tuning laptop now, and plug in with my USB. On the software side of stuff, one of my favorite parts, since I'm a huge software nerd, is this little key that comes inside your kit right here. This holds the Haltech software. So we're gonna bring it over to our tuning computer. Uh, BS for Build bought me this awesome computer. To, uh, this is what we're gonna use to manage all of our tuning on all of our cars moving forward, which is pretty cool. Uh, so it's got all of our Haltech resources right on here. I'm gonna go ahead and install the software and then we can plug it into the ECU. So this is so cool. We powered on the car, we got our ECU on and I've connected for the first time over USB on the new software that we just uh, rolled up and installed. So pretty soon we should be able to actually see for the first time, yeah, come on. We can actually see some things about the car, like that battery voltage right here, that's actually real. That's that's really the car's battery voltage. Some of these other signals are not gonna be right because they're not plugged in yet, but uh, that's pretty cool. So we're actually reading things through the ECU, like of the car for the very first time on the software. So now the next thing I gotta do is find a, uh, find a base map. So you can see the voltage is like actually changing right now. That's super cool. Um, so I think if we go over here, I don't know if you guys will be able to see all of this, but, um, file import map. The software package comes with a bunch of maps. So GM, and this is a 5.3 liter. So we're gonna be like at LS16, drive-by wire. And then we have a bunch of different EV1, FF. I don't know these, what these different uh, maps are, but all of these will probably, you know, as a base map, so this is like loading in, you know, a base map for this engine. It's just that easy. So that's really, really cool. And then that'll flash the map onto the Elite. And uh, that's just badass. So next thing we wanna do is start uh, properly wiring in a lot of this stuff. We've got connected to our ECU. Our ECU is connected to our car at the base point. Now let's start doing some like, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Permanent wiring. Permanent, the stuff that stays there. Now that we've had our fun dialing into the ECU with a laptop, it's time to start doing some of the permanent wiring. So like I showed, told you guys earlier, we're gonna run a heavy gauge wired lug from the front battery connection underneath the car back over to here to this guy, which is a little dingy right now, so I'm gonna order a new one. This is a, basically an LS engine positive lug. Uh, you can see it's insulated from the metal right there by the plastic, so we can bolt this somewhere onto the car, it won't go here, and then we can wire up to it, and then that's where we're gonna start distributing positive power in the back of the engine bay here. So we got some super heavy duty four gauge wire that we're gonna run the length of the car. And then we got some eight gauge that we're gonna run from that lug to our starter later on. So Oscar's gonna go ahead and jump into doing all that right now, mapping it underneath the car. We're gonna follow, if you see right down there, that's actually an old Lamborghini wire. So we're probably gonna pull that out and then replace it with our new one and mount this thing permanently and start routing those wires.
All right, so Oscar just finished up uh, permanently, like it, routing our permanent power to the engine bay. So it comes off of this thing right here. Like I said, I'm gonna order another one of these so it's nice and clean. And this is mounted to our frame. And although it looks like, okay, you can't run positive, this is actually taking positive power right now as I speak. And it's not grounded because it's all insulated by this plastic. Then we ran down and we actually ran, just we just decided to run into the stock Lamborghini wire that runs right up to the front because uh, it ended up being this guy right here, which is a real nice clean connection. It goes straight back there uh, the way they designed it. So we figured follow along with that. So we're tapped into that with our highest gauge wire running there into our positive lug. And then we have our starter wire that runs also from our positive over here to the starter. And if you guys don't know the way a starter works is you run positive power to it all the time and then a starter signal wire, which is gonna come from our ECU and I believe it's hanging out right here, that tells it to kick on, it plugs on right here. So uh, that's all wired up now as well. So that's really good. We're doing temporary grounds until we figure out exactly how we want to ground everything else out for the time being. So it's all hooked up now. Now we're going to start worrying about the wiring harness. To get our wires looking really clean, we're going to have to extend a couple of these because of our insane configuration, backwards manifold, engine in the wrong spot, all that good stuff. Uh, so we're going to extend some of them, be heat shrinking them, be working with all of them, um, and that's all good. But uh, to do that, we want to have our actual manifold that we're going to be using for the whole time in this build. So we're going to pull off this manifold and this uh, set of fuel rails. That's going to go, and then we're going to put our Texas Speed manifold on here and then start routing all the wires, how they're going to be permanently. Also got some good progress, got the intake manifold off and the loom starting to run through there. That's gonna be a nightmare. I'm gonna let him work on that. While he's doing that, I'm gonna be focusing on two big things. One is trying to wire up our accelerator pedal, which I will get into later. And the first thing is trying to hack this key system. So there's something I've learned since uh, yesterday when we were working on this. I've been in contact with a uh, Lamborghini technician who works for Lamborghini, who will remain completely anonymous. And he's been helping me through some of these like tougher questions and tougher problems. And the key issue is like a big issue, especially if you can't really bring your car to Lamborghini, which we can't. We could, probably wouldn't go over well. They're not gonna treat us very well. We don't have multiple days to wait. So I'm looking for alternative uh, methods to try and get this thing to start. So I'm thinking this. Um, after all that I've learned, so that's body control module two. Body control module one is over there. They're both not super expensive parts. The key is the most expensive part. And as far as I know, and the Lamborghini technician has told me, it's a mixture between the body control modules, that little ignition coil reader, and the key that makes your car start. And it's all programmed around the VIN. So my thought is, let's test the green car's stuff. Let's test its body control module, its ignition thing, and its key, and see if it will turn on this car. If we find out that that works, I know there's a guy on eBay selling a body control module, a key, an ignition coil, all from a matching car that was totaled out. I can buy that for relatively cheap, and then we have a key, and then we can get going. We don't have to buy a factory Lamborghini key, which is a thousand dollars and we don't have to pay them to program it all so let's get hacking i gotta pull the body control module out of the green huracan I just finished uninstalling the uh, body control module two out of the spider. The fact that it is for a spider might be a really big difference factor. So I'm, I'm hoping that won't be a problem, but we never know. I got the key in my pocket. I'm leaving the ignition key reader coil for this car in here, um, just cause it didn't change anything the last time. So I'm hoping that won't be a deciding factor cause those are really hard to find. So I want to try it without first. So now I just got to pull that one out of the car and install this one and we'll give it a test. All right, new BCM is installed, dash is on. Uh, so that's a good sign right off the bat. We're gonna go ahead and hit start, throw the key up to the thing, and if things start to get crazy, we know we've done it. If they don't, it did not matter. Nada, we're not getting anything. So it's on to the next thing to try, which is changing out this coil, and then the next thing is changing out the body control module one as well. All right, we have our ignition key reader module in there from the green Lambo as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and give us just a quick test. Same result, no go. So now we're gonna go ahead and put in body control module one down there. 
Okay, BCM1 is installed from the Green Huracan. BCM2 is installed from the Green Huracan. Ignition key reader is installed. At this point, if it doesn't work, I'm actually gonna be surprised. I'm actually gonna think it has to do more with the transmission control unit uh, because that's the main message we got on here. So um, let's give it a try. This is so bizarre. It's still not wanting to work. All right, next up for the interior, Kyle and I are just gonna take a shot in the dark and install the rest of the modules that we have. We got our other shipment of stuff in from Exotic Auto, so we're gonna go ahead and start plugging all that stuff in now. It's mainly the uh, multimedia, uh, the head unit, which goes up there, the rear unit that goes over there, it accepts like a little CD and some stuff like that, and the controls that run through the middle. I didn't even turn the camera on because I had absolutely no faith. We turned the freaking car on, guys. It said initializing stuff, vehicle settings. It knows that there's a car here. This is big. <laughs> wow, so we plugged in a bunch of other stuff. And then, I mean, we might not have turned the car on yet. I'm not really sure, but I did hit a button on this and then we should figure out if we turn the car on or we just hit a button. It wasn't even <laughs> anything like It hasn't asked for the key though. All right, I'm gonna play with this for a second. This is a this is a big step forward, at least. Well, a moderate size step. I don't know. Well, this is really great. It's another step forward. We got more stuff working. I mean, we'd be really close if we could just. Well, anyways, we're we're very close. But um, this is just a menu that is not like part of the ignition on thing. So we're still not there yet. It's not reading the key and giving us ignition on. We're not sure if it has to do with the key or something else. One interesting thing is it thinks that the VIN number for this vehicle now is my green Huracan, not the VIN number for this vehicle. So that's pretty interesting, but we're still locked out from the whole ignition concept. I don't know if it has to do with because it's in neutral here and we can't shift it because we don't have a transmission control module and we don't have a transmission. Uh, I don't really know, but uh, we're going to keep working on it and we're going to keep keep doing what we can do. But that that's as far as we can go for now. So that's pretty cool. We're going to go ahead and power down the car now and move on to the accelerator pedal. Well, first, let me give you an update on how Oscar's doing. So Oscar peeled back the loom quite a bit and we're starting to organize all the kind of hidden wires what's going backwards that way coming back around where we need to do our extensions and stuff like that and we do want to say since Haltech is our sponsor and they hooked us up with this really nice loom and then we just jumped into it and cut it up this is not what you would be doing because your engine will be facing the right way in your car so the loom's going to be really nice and pretty and you're going to it's all cut to length see that's why like this thing's longer than this thing it would look super nice in a car with an engine in the right place but since ours is backwards and in the back it makes it a, yeah and our intake manifold is flipped around backwards as well it makes it a little bit more difficult so that's why we're doing this uh but sema build got to be pretty so uh, austin's going to keep to it Now what I'm doing is I'm gonna tap in, I'm, a, I'm going to attempt to tap into the Lamborghini acceleration pedal and feed the signals into our Haltech. So part of the loom that they give us here that's in the cabin side of the loom is a bunch of signal wires that go to the pedal. So what I need to do is look up the wiring diagram for the Lamborghini and find out what, I think it's six or seven wires that go into that pedal, find out what those six wires do, and then I'll match them up with the, what the six wires do in the Haltech um, owner's manual, what those wires do. We'll match them up, we'll wire them together, and then we'll be able to tap into that with our laptop and make sure that our acceleration pedal is working. So our R8 manual, we found all the wires. These are all the colors uh, that we have and we're looking for, and we know exactly kind of what they do, the negatives, the positive, the signal wire. Uh, 
So it's uh, it's time to go full commit. There's a wire that's back here under the pedal that runs down and goes to a plug and that plug goes in the back of the pedal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna snip that kind of high up so I have a plug with some pigtails and we're gonna match those wires up, put those wires over there, plug it into the pedal and pray that it works. All right, I wired up my uh, I wired up my pedal um, plug to the ECU now. So this pedal is no longer gonna send a signal to the Lamborghini because we don't really want it to. Now it's just gonna send the signal to the ECU, hopefully. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and plug this thing in and then we're gonna turn on our ECU, jump in there with the laptop and there should hopefully be a pedal calibration uh, kind of menu. All right, we did something really cool. So um, in here, when you go into your settings, um, there's a calibration menu like I was talking about. I only knew this because I read it in kind of the, the primer booklet. Anyway, so you you, uh, you reset the calibration um, with the pedal completely out, and then step two is come pedal completely in, and so we did that. And then now when we're uh, looking at our things, you got drive-by wire, accelerator position, accelerator pedal position. So right now you're gonna see we're at zero percent, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my hand on the pedal, and you're gonna see the percentage changed throughout the whole spectrum going all the way off and all the way down so we've officially wired a lamborghini accelerator pedal into our haltech that is very cool back for day two or three or wherever it is and uh and we've decorated the floor with awesome wires. Now what we've been doing is we've actually been kind of looking at our harness. So this is our replacement harness that goes back and towards the back of the car that we're hoping to not have to use since we don't, we don't need any of this stuff really. Or at least we didn't think we needed it until my top secret Lamborghini technician friend told me something that the key needs an ECU to complete the circuit, or at least that is the belief. So now we are in the testing phase. So we tried to test, the first test we we're gonna do is to see if we could plug in our Cyvex unit. So this is our Cyvex unit from the burnt thing uh, and see if we could plug it into the car. And although these plugs fit in here, they're not actually supposed to go there. It's really weird that they fit anyways. It's actually supposed to go into a patch cable two plugs here for one ECU, two plugs over there for the other ECU, go all together to a patch that all ends up in the Cyvex. That is what's left of that melted hunk of stuff right there. So I've contacted uh, a Cyvex retailer local to me to see if I can possibly buy that patch, see if we can maybe work some magic. But until then, what we're gonna do is test this theory on the green Huracan. Now, rather than pulling the ECUs out of the green Huracan, we're actually gonna bring some Burnticon stuff over to it. So we're on our way over now to the other shop. We're gonna grab the green Huracan. We're gonna install, th this is what I've nicknamed the Burnticon for now. Burnticon, BCM1, BCM2, and um, key reader coil. And then we're gonna match that with the green key and the green ECUs, and we'll just see what happens. We're gonna start, we're gonna start mixing and matching to figure out what is the necessary stuff to see if it's possible that I can just make a quick eBay order and buy a few things to solve this problem. Oh, and as always, Oscar's doing the hard work, um, so he's stripping all the wires back, you know, keeping this looking clean and getting things where they need to go. We'll get baseball tees, Oscar MVP on the back of them. Yeah, did you see all those? I saw all the comments. All right, we swapped that out. Let's go ahead and give it another test. All righty, guys. So, you can see that the car is on. Some things sound a little bit upset, but anyways, car's on. Uh, so we verified that if you use the right key, you can use the wrong ignition coil, you can use the wrong uh, BCM1, you need to have the key that's paired to the BCM2, and we don't know about the ECUs. That is a question mark. All right, so what we figured out is that we need a key that is paired to a BCM2, and we need an ECU to be in the car to run. Whether or not that needs to be paired to the key, we don't really know. Uh, the main takeaway is, is that we need to add an ECU into the thing and we need a paired key to a BCM. So I already gotta buy a key and a BCM too, which are super expensive. Not super, I mean, well, it's a thousand bucks for the pair. So yes, yeah, super expensive. And then we need to get an ECU. So we can either do a patch cable from Cyvex. It's gonna be super overpriced. I already know that because everything from Cyvex is overpriced. Or um, we can just roll the dice and get an unpaired set of ECUs off of eBay. I 
just checked on eBay and I don't think that there's a key, a BCM and ECUs all on eBay together. And I'm not sure if I need one ECU or two, which is super annoying because this car actually has two, but I believe they're a copy of each other. A lot of random stuff. We got to roll the dice and buy some stuff to try and get this uh, thing, you know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll the dice. I'll buy a bunch of stuff. I'll let you guys know how it goes when we get it. Back to whatever Oscar's doing. Oscar is almost done wiring in this stuff. So uh, we have different uh, tails on our injectors. So we've got all new injector tails and all new stuff. And he's gotten, he's getting everything really close to the, uh, well, he's getting everything to length. He's got one more thing to do. We're getting everything to length. So it's going to look really nice and everything. And a lot of the stuff might not even plug into this engine. We're getting it ready for the next LS engine. So one of the things that the last thing that we need to do and wire up and integrate into the system uh, to hit our goal. And remember our goal is to hit a button and have the engine starter be triggered. So it's like wants to start. So the way that that works is when you power on the Huracan system with the Huracan key, the whole thing we've been trying to figure out, um, which we're emulating right now, that will power on our ECU. So that powers our, on our ECU. And then after that, once you send a 12 volt signal to the ECU starter wire, it will tell the um, starter to start the car. So that's where this button comes in. This is just a demo button, a temporary button, but it's gonna eventually land on our steering wheel. So you'll come into the car, you'll turn the car on with your key or by hitting the start button or whatever. And then if you, uh, that will automatically kick on the ECU and then when you hit the start button on the steering wheel It'll turn the car on so the way we do that is we take a um, Constant power which I'm gonna go ahead and wire in right now And we're gonna emulate that probably to our power as like the same as our power to our ECU and then um, You go that on one end and the other end goes to the starter wire on the ECU when you push this down It'll bridge those two things together and it'll send the start signal. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire that all in right now The aftermath. Oscar has got everything wired, rewired, everything's ready to roll. So right now we have you know a few sensors plugged in, a few different things plugged in, but all the wires are nicely loomed and the right length. So uh, one thing we did get plugged in though is we got our starter. So you guys remember earlier in the episode, we did our power lug running to our starter right here, starter signal cable that runs back to the ECU. And then um, I did a lot of hard work, you know, about two wires, solid two wires on our starter button. So we're gonna go ahead and power the car on and emulate the car into the on position, turning on the ECU. Uh, and then in one second, I'll show you that. And then we'll go ahead and hit the start button. And if all works, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and actually activate that starter, which would actually start to start the engine if we had the uh, little plate in there that it connects with. All right, you can see our ECU has power right there. Here we go, you guys ready? Moment of truth. There it is. <laughs> so if we would have had our clutch and our little stuff in there, all the, all the, the, the gizmos that would have cranked over that engine. That's awesome. So this is the initial wire up of the ECU. You know, we've got a lot more stuff to do. This ECU has a ton of functionality that, you know, we, we are just scratching the surface of all the stuff that this thing can do. And uh, there's some really, really cool possibilities. Uh, you know, a, a lot of time people buy ECUs that are, you know, this powerful because they're gonna um, tap into their CAN bus system of their car and start changing a lot of other things as well on engine swaps. It can totally do that, but that's just not something for the first stage of this build that we're really focused on. We're really focused on it just doing a great job of controlling this LS engine and not really even this one, the Texas speed one to get us to a thousand horsepower. So that's it. The initial ECU install complete. Thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in and a huge thanks goes out to Haltech for sponsoring us on this build, providing us with the awesome ECU and Loom and everything. Guys, if you are looking for a standalone ECU for your build, head to the link in the description. I'm gonna link you guys to their site. They make some great quality products. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. So huge thanks goes out to them. And in the next episode, we're gonna jump over to carbon fiber for a second and give ourselves a, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna do a little test run. It should be pretty fun. So tune in for that. I'll see you guys soon. Peace. <laughs>